the early days of mixed martial arts were a magical time. There were many very different kinds of martial artists fighting with each other, Muay Thai against a boxer, a wrestler against a karateka, and so on. That was a very interesting time, and I think we have such an interesting time today in uh, in the longevity field. And that's why I'm really excited to find um, Dr. Stephen Shore on the longevity leaderboard, because he's not going to be your typical biohacker uh, or or typical doctor of uh, of medicine and diseases but uh, he has a very unique background he's he's uh, he's well versed in the chinese indian and hawaiian martial arts and by martial arts i mean medicine herbs so we are going to talk about that but I want you to, to understand some, some major achievements of, uh, of Dr. Stephen Shore. And, and I will start with, uh, with a question that it is really hard to deny that there is a in, in incredible progress being made on, on his side. And of course, uh, he's on the epigenetic leaderboard. In fact, he's on the absolute epigenetic leaderboard so the the more more relevant one he's the 18th but you know some people might argue that epigenetics is kind of magical but there is something that is really hard to debate which is which is telomeres so the current longevity paradigm is the hallmarks of aging. There are a number of hallmarks of aging, but as far as I understand in the early days, the original hallmarks of aging was the size of the telomeres. And I would like to ask you to tell the story of your telomeres. You know, um, t telomeres are still quite relevant. In, in the greater story. And, and there's debate about it. Uh, obviously, the early people that uh, developed and discovered telomerase were very keen to preserve its significance in the anti-aging world. Uh, and, and I think it's taken a sort of a backseat to the epigenome clocks that have been developed uh, since 2019 by Dr. Horvath and others. Um, but the telomeres are important. And, and the reason that they're important is that they define the capacity of the organism to resist senescent cell production. Senescent cell production ultimately creates chemokins and cytokines that are causing significant inflammatory responses in the body. Uh, there are a lot of conditions of aging. Uh, we know what they are and we know how to measure them. But ultimately, it's the chronic long-term inflammation that is the root cause of the diseases of aging, uh, which are heart disease, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, neurodegenerative diseases. These are all conditions that are in fact the what is actually killing us as we age. Um, now, there are other things going on. There are many significant things mm -hmm. going on, and I, I will you know, certainly uh, elucidate on that. But with respect to telomeres themselves, uh, I immediately began to see the significance of telomeres, um, not only because of their anti-inflammatory capabilities, but also as the biomarker that defines um, a, an aspect of the physiology that is reversible and measurable. So we, we want to see, we want to find these biomarkers. Biomarkers are very significant. We want to find the ones that are useful to us. There are biomarkers that are not useful to us. I'll give you a quick example. Um, everyone's talking about um, NAD and, and uh, uh, NMN, the precursor to NAD. And what we learned early on is that those biomarkers uh, can be significantly skewed by supplementation. So in other words, if you took some 
the precursor to NAD, which is uh, the precursor to ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which creates energy in the mitochondria. If you supplement for that, you will find out pretty significantly and pretty quick um, that you can cause your, uh, ultimately your uh, measurement to, uh, to significantly decrease. And so, um, uh, increase rather. So all of a sudden you're, you're taking supplementation for, N uh, for NAD. So the point that I was making is that if you supplement for NAD with N N MNN or other like uh, NR, nicotine riboside, then you're going to get a spike and that spike is going to cause your reading of the biomarker to go up but then it'll go back down. And so it's not that significant. Um, th that's a huge issue. Uh, and what, what we're trying to do here is look at which are the biomarkers that are in fact significant. Um, and that is why telomeres are important. So, so early on I had um, done some telomere, uh, and when, when the early te telomere providers were in motion, I had done some telomere work. And my telomeres back in the day were running, I don't know, seven, 8,000 base pairs. Um, when I developed the extended longevity protocol and took a, a, a reading after one year of use of the protocol, which is, you know, 10 phytotherapeutic extract formulations that address the 10 determinant factors of aging, one milliliter of each per day. So there's 10 milliliters per day of that. After one year, my, my uh, epigenome went down 15 years and stayed there ever since. So I've stopped aging completely according to the epigenome, but my telomeres continued to grow. So I currently, according to my last test, have 10,380 base pairs of telomeres. Well, you're born with 10,000 base pairs and you die with about 5,500 when you're 80 or, or so. So I've made significant progress in a fairly short time in regrowing my telomeres to what we call hyperlong telomerization state. So hyperlong telomeres, according to research that was done in mega studies and this sort of thing, uh, have indicated that uh, you can achieve enhanced longevity through hyperlong telomeres. And the meta study in the UK uh, indicated that hyperlong telomeres have been indicative of good facial aging, which I find very fascinating because, you know, in the cosmetic industry, no one wants to look like they're getting old. Um, so if you have good facial aging, then you're going to be. Um, looking younger. So I'm 70 and a half, 70, almost 71 here. Uh, and I don't know, I think my skin looks pretty good. I don't know that I look 32 or, or anything like that, but, but I certainly look better than most people in my, my age range. Um, Hyperlong telomeres are important because they confer aspects of good longevity in the, the aspects of where Longevity is most important. And of course, this is, has to do with chronic inflammation, which is the root cause of these diseases that are killing people. Now, I wanted to segue into that and go back to the epigenome issues because the epigenome is really critically important. It's become one of the most important tests. And in fact, when you talk about the leaderboard, that's true diagnostics. I work with them. I did a clinical study that they were providing uh, data for. Uh, in their epigen epigenome studies. Um, I have migrated uh, over to the Elysium Health Index test because I think it's a much more consistent, reliable test for my purposes. Um, the leaderboard and the work of the True Diagnostic uh, Olympics, you know, Longevity Olympics, um, I, I find um, my data on that is old. I've actually gone much further than that, but I, I don't have the, uh, the, the most current test available on that particular platform. What I've done is maintain uh, four basic tests uh, that I think are the most significant. One is the telomere test, where I've regrown my telomeres to a significant level. The other is this epigenome test, where um, when I first tested epigenome, I was 66 at the time, and I measured out at 67. Now, what's significant about that uh, was that I had been taking all kinds of supplements, L-arginine, 
uh, NMN, all kinds of different things at the time. Uh, and it, they did nothing. They did nothing. And it was only until I began to take the extended longevity protocol after one year, because I could have tested sooner, but I was I didn't know what was going to happen. It was the early stages of, of, of my development. I waited a year, and in that next test, I had dropped down 15 years. Uh, so I'm 67. I turned out to be 50 three at the time. I've stayed there, 53, 54. My last uh, epigenome test through um, Elysium Health came out as 54 uh, as I turned 70. I took a test when I turned 70. So so that's a 16-year hysteresis or differentiation in that. And uh, so I, I continue to be the same epigenome, epigenomic age while I chronologically continue to age. Um, now, chronological aging is just the times you've been around the sun. So it's significant in that that's how we, you know, the convention of how we measure aging. But if I'm at 53, 54 for five years now, uh, I think it, it, one could draw the conclusion that I've stopped aging, at least where the epigenome is concerned. And the epigenome is important because it's a, it's a record of what proteins have been turned on and off. If the genome is the record, is the, is the pattern uh, the blueprint of who you are, how to make you, how to make the uh, proteins that make your physiology, then the epigenome is what happened. It's the record of what proteins have been turned on and off, and it's you can change it. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the TRIM study that happened back in the uh, fall of 2019, but uh, Dr. Fahey out of UCLA did a study with nine men in their late 60s. Mostly, he was looking to demonstrate uh, whether uh, a, a, a series of off-the-shelf compounds could affect um, the regeneration of the thymus gland. The thymus gland, as we know, has a tendency to uh, turn to adipose fat as you get older, so that by the time you're in your 60s, it's gone. Um, what's important about the thymus gland is that it creates killer T cells, and it's important for your immune system to create an immune response when various kinds of contagens enter the environment. And this is why when COVID happened, so many of the elderly were succumbing to that because they didn't have any thymus activity going on anymore. So Dr. Fahey back in 2019 um, did a test on using metformin, DHEA, HGH, and um, zinc and selenium was his formula. And he gave it to these nine guys. Now, what's interesting about this, and he did discover that there was some reactivity in, in the thymus gland, and that was significant. But what was really significant in this story is that he had extra blood that he was drawing from these guys. And he gave the extra blood to Dr. Steve Horvath, who was the guy who was responsible for the first epigenome clocks. And he analyzed it, and for the first time in history, he demonstrated that, on average, the cohort of nine guys decelerated in their age by one and a half years. That study and the announcement of that was, was a very big deal back in 2019, and it kind of set the tone for what was to happen historically in the launching of the uh, longevity space, you know, the longevity biotech industry. Upon seeing that information and realizing what they had done, I also understood that metformin is not really, you know, it's, it's a good anti-diabetic jug for short periods of time, but long range, it's kind of toxic and it will kill you. It's not a good thing. You don't want to be taking it for a long time. So I thought to myself, being a master herbologist, that what I would do is try and find something better in the plant kingdom that could be synergistic and mimetic to the uh, to the, the, the compound that was making metformin. And I found that in, in uh, the, it's the compound berberine will do that. <laughs> and it's almost bioidentical to what metformin actually turned out to be. So I developed, pardon me, I've developed what I believe is the science of um, applied biomolecular herbology. And that science requires me to find synergistic and mimetic herbal analogs to the compounds that were being studied in the allopathic world in the anti-aging space. Um, that's where I began. That was the, the the touchstone. Was that study when it came out, and and at, before that, I I have been uh, historically I'm based upon in Maui, Hawaii, and I'm uh, an herbologist who has been taught uh, about the herbal kingdom from the Kahuna's 
who are the Hawaiian indigenous medicinal people, the Kohuna Laulapa'au. And then one of the last and great Laulapa'au came to my facility and, and was sent to, uh, in her dreams, by her kapuna, which are the elders, to find me, to teach me these Hawaiian uh, herbal lessons. And I, so I learned uh, about the herbal kingdom from the, from the ancient Hawaiian tradition. That's how I sort of entered into this. I'm a scientist and a, an inventor entrepreneur, and I have a load of patents and different things. But getting into this and being taught from the herbal perspective from that kingdom was very, very significant. Um, so that began my journey in developing this formulation. Now, I came upon subsequently the hallmarks of aging, which I'm sure you're familiar with. That was a study done in 2013 uh, that basically identified at the time nine significant aspects of what they call hallmarks of aging. They've uh, subsequently expanded that to 12. But I looked at that and I began to research that. And I began to do other research with other anti-aging people like uh, Dr. Walter Pierpaolo of Italy, who had worked significantly with uh, uh, melatonin uh, and uh, began to, again, look at what was significant in in science at the time that was really getting traction and had data that I could look at that was creating the opportunity to reverse this aging process. Because otherwise, you know, you reach into your 60s and your mid 60s and there you go. But you'll find that um, uh, you need to begin to start intervening uh, with what's happening because the cascading process of aging uh, is going to take you down and it will make you uh, old and it will uh, if you're not healthy it will ultimately time you'll time out because they're of the, of the cascading issues that are happening um, for instance I'll give you another interesting example um, there's a concept called a uh, blood transcription a blood signaling it's like how do all the cells in your body find out that it's time to um, grow old and die and they do it simultaneously, like your elbow and your nose, they all grow old at the same time. Well, um, there's some research that is being done up in the University of California, Berkeley, um, by Dr. Irina and Michael Convoy. And, and the Convoys were doing work in something called heterochronic parabiosis. Fancy word, what does it mean? Well, it means you take an old mouse and a young mouse and you sew them together and you connect the circulatory system. And what they discovered is the old mouse gets young and the young mouse gets old. And the next question is, how did that happen? So they started to study the blood because that was the common denominator in heterochronic parabiosis. And what they found is when you're young, you have a lot of oxytocin and very little transformational growth factor beta-1. Those are the two compounds that are active. That shifts as you get older. And they observe this. And by the time you're in your elderly years, you have a lot of transformation growth factor beta-1 and very little oxytocin. And they determined that this was a likely candidate for what was causing the aging process from, a, from an ubiquitous sort of broadcasting, what we call blood transcription uh, process. So what I did was I went out and I found in the plant kingdom by doing research on the NCBI, that's the National Center for Biological Information, that is PubMed, and, and it's, it's just a wealth of millions of documents. And the, the key to that is knowing how to get in there and find what you're looking for, obviously. But I found molecular structure in the plant kingdom that would suppress transformational growth factor beta-1 and increase, be a synergist, to oxytocin. So I took those that formula and I made one of the 10 products. It's called Glucosid in the set of 10 of the extended longevity protocol. And that's the one that will start changing your physiology from a blood transcri transcription uh, perspective. Everybody's talking about inflammation as being key. And it is, there's no doubt inflammation is, is critical to the process, but it's not the only thing that's happening. This is a, a very complicated process that, that takes on a number of different things. Um, and in each case, you have to be able to address a plethora of problems that are happening physiologically, and it's over time, and it affects people differently at different times in their life. But now we know what aging is. We know what's doing it. We know how to measure it. And I think for the first time in human history, we're pretty clear 
that we know how to reverse this process now. We're pretty clear about that because the data is showing up that way. I did a clinical study. I had uh, about 12 people in my, in my cohort. It's a small study, but they used the extended longevity protocol for one year. It was an independent study conducted by the Quantum Healing Center in Carlsbad, California by Dr. Jurgen Winkler uh, under the auspices of the Institute for Regenerative and Cellular Medicine out of Santa Monica, Dr. Barbara Krutchkoff. So it was very hands-off for us. It was independently done. But across the board, our data demonstrated that we were seeing the, the, the same results, increased length in telomeres, decrease uh, in the epigenome. And again, we were using the epigenome work of uh, true diagnostics for the first part of it. And then the following the final part of it, I switched over to the epigenome test of Elysium Health. Uh, and in every case, we got significant uh, deceleration. And when you look back at the TRIM study and the, the, the one and a half year average deceleration, we're getting 10 to 15 year decelerations from our protocol. It's almost unheard of, and, but it's consistent. And it's not just me and then because I'm a, you know, a good scientist or a nice guy or I live on Maui or whatever. It's, it's all over the world we're sending our products right now. People are taking them and on the protocol, they're testing and they're getting similar results. They're stopping aging, they're decelerating aging, they're increasing their telomeres. Another interesting test that we do now is something called glycanage that's coming out of Croatia. Are you familiar with the glycanage test? Yes. No. Yeah. So, uh, please tell me. Yeah, well, glycanage uh, tests the glycans, which are the molecular structure of sugars within the cells. And they do a similar uh, analysis that they were doing uh, in the epigenomics, only called they call it glyconomics. And basically what's happening is they're saying, look, when you're 20s, your glycan age looks like this, and they draw a, a chart with a bunch of dots on it and a line through it. And when you're 30, it looks like this. And when you're 40, it looks like this. So each, each age sequence, they can see what's happening to the physiology across a broad spectrum of humanity. And that's how they know kind of where the sweet spot is in there. So using this analysis, they come out and they can basically say, okay, you know, you're if you're chronologically this age, but your glycan show up as this, then we say you're physiologically, your glycan age is such. So the last test I took on my glycan age, uh, I came out at 32 years old. So my inflammation and immune system is behaving like that of a 32 year old. And again, I'm 70, almost 71 years old here. I'm very proud of that. I'm very excited by that because that's very significant. So it it's a great, be. yeah, yeah, and and it really kind of dovetails into the C-reactive protein test. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but that's the standard measure of inflammation. So typically, mm -hmm. men my age run between three and ten on the C-reactive protein. I run zero point five, so we have a very very low inflammation profile. The glycan age test um, validated that and demonstrated that on a, on a broader uh, basis. So we use the glycan age test now, we use the telomere test, we use the epigenome test. In every case, I'm, re I'm, I'm showing up as a younger, physiologically younger person. Um, I'm in great health. I'm in amazing health. I've got extraordinary vitality. Intellectually, I'm, I'm on fire. Uh, I attributed that to regular consumption of these compounds, of these uh, herbal extracts herbal extract formulations that are really getting the job done. And you don't need a lot of it, but you need to do it regularly because the herbal model is different than the pharmaceutical model. In herbology, it's a little slower. The intervention has to seep in, so to speak, you know, uh, but in the model where the pharmaceutical, they're looking, everyone in the pharmaceutical in in industry is looking for a single molecule that's not found in nature that they can patent and sell to big pharma. That's the model. That's what the entire industry is based on. We're saying, look, all these molecules are already in nature. Find them in the right plant, compose them in the right formulation, and then slowly ease into the intervention that's going to last you long and not have any side effects. The data proves it out. It's working across the board to the, the many customers that we have uh, and patients that are using this. The results are fantastic and people feel good. They feel, you know, people say to me, well, what happens if I stop using it? What will happen to me? And I'm saying, you know, I, I don't know because I'm not going to stop. <laughs> I'm having such great results. Why would I do that? Um, 
yeah, I keep going. It's such a positive. Well, what are, what are we talking about uh, exactly? Can you can you list the 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 things that uh, you've the package here? What what yeah. you have in it? So Or is it, it too many? <laughs> no, no. In in the extended longevity protocol, there are ten formulations. So it's ten. You, in a set, there's a set of ten. Comes in a box. Yes. The box has ten tubes in it. So each tube has a bottle. Bottle has a dropper with a graduated um, mm -hmm. take one milliliter of each formulation. Each formulation addresses a different aspect of the of what is occurring in the aging process. Now we found ten that we think are are most germane and the most significant. We'll learn more over time. We we know we don't have them all, but we've got many of the really significant ones. Like well, I'll tell you one is, well, I'll go through them. So. Um, you start off with something called pintanol. Pintanol is based upon Dr. Walter Pierpaolo's work of Italy, who was doing the work with melatonin. He had tremendous results and published broadly, but not really recognized in, in, in America or the Western environment um, as being a significant thing. But, the, you know, the, the, the pineal gland and the, um, the axis of the pineal gland, the hypothalamus and the suprachismatic nucleus are the key signaling uh, centers and glands in the brain that are managing your entire hormonal output. You have circadian rhythms in there. You have hormonal release. Um, you know, these uh, compounds like melatonin, they're not just hormones. They're also signaling molecules. So there's all kinds of aspects of how we regulate our physiology that are connected to the brain and what the brain is signaling out. Now, one of the major sources of melatonin in this in this particular uh, extract formulation uh, is the pistachio nut. So we harvest those and organically and uh, and extract them, uh, and that is the source of the melatonin amongst several other compounds that are that are in the product. All these things can be seen uh, and discussed very deeply on our website at extendedlongevity.com. And I've written scientific, 20-page scientific white papers on each of these products. They're, they're right on the site. You can download them and read the science and where I found the supporting data and information that came out of that, uh, uh, that study. So, uh, so that's one. So you want to be able to, so what Dr. Pierpaolo determined is that if at night, you take a source of melatonin that is natural. In this case, it's natural and combined with other uh, supportive compounds. You can rest the pineal gland so that it's more efficient in producing melatonin during the day when it's more active as a signaling molecule. So that's one of the compounds that, are, that we feel are super important. And then we go to Thivol. Thivol is also... Um, takes off on some of the research that was done in the Fahey study about transforming uh, and regenerating the thymus gland because you want that activity of um, immune support that's coming from the thymus gland. Look, a thymus gland is known to shut down as you age. It turns into fat, and that fat is not producing T-cell, killer T-cells. We want that. So Thibol is designed with molecular structure that will do that. Uh, then we have a product called um, Inflasolve. Inflasolve directly relates to lowering global uh, inflammation issues. It contains turmeric. We harvest our turmeric organically here on Maui. It's traceable. We're very, very big on traceability. We want to know where this material came from. We want to know that it's organic. We want to know that it's not tainted with lead. A lot of the turmeric that comes from India right now, for instance, um, they adulterate it with heavy metals to make the color more orange because they can get a better price for it. Uh, I don't, I don't want to take heavy metals in my turmeric. So we know the guys that are growing it here on Maui. They grow it for us organically. So we can trace ourselves right back to the farm. We bring in fresh rhizomes. And then, you know, turmeric is an interesting compound. It's, it's in, in many of our compounds because the ancient kahunas said of all the plants that they will teach us in their medica, Olena, which is turmeric, Olena is the Hawaiian name for it, will be the most important. And it, and it is. And there's so many compounds in turmeric that are so good for us. Again, the major one is, redu is the curcuminoids that are reducing inflammation. But the curcuminoids, interestingly, are uh, hydrophobic. They don't like water. 
you got to get him out uh, in uh, in a uh, what we call uh, a menstruum of of organic alcohol from cane cane sugar is what we use, and it's mixed with deep sea mineral water that comes from the thermal haline layer that they harvest at the three thousand foot level off the coast of Kona. It's a, an, an interesting thing that's happening in Hawaii here, but they they put a uh, basically a tube down into the ocean, 3,000 feet down, and they're sucking up the, the water from the thermal haline layer. They, they desalinate it, but that water hasn't been seen the light of day in 2,000 years. So this is a very significant thing. Um, and, and there are companies that harvest that water and package it in bottles and sell, sell mostly in Japan, but we can get it over here. So we mix that with our uh, organic sugar cane. That's what we use in the extraction process. And we're, we're doing something called reflux extraction. So we're taking that material and we're, we're basically heating it and uh, uh, condensing it in a loop that lasts for five hours. So we're getting the most curcuminoids, 3,600% more bioavailable than if you took the powders, which are pretty lifeless. So the um, Infusal is combined with Boswellia, which is frankincense um, extract, as well as uh, Salix alba. Salix alba is the white willow bark, uh, and um, Centella asiatica. And we take these compounds and we, we have formulation temp, uh, methodologies that allow us to get optimum bioavailability and e efficacy to the, to the consumer. So we're head on addressing the inflammation issue with that one. The next one we have is called telegenic. That's the one that specifically regrows the telomeres. So it's astragalus is the major one in there. Uh, astra astragalus, uh, also more salix alba, some um, uh, Camellia sinensis, Centella asiatica, with a number of herbs that are in there that are significant to supporting and regrowing telomeres. How does it work? We test for it. We take tests. We across the board. We have a, a bunch of people here, a part of our uh, group of uh, experimenters. We call them longevinots, right? And the longevinots are taking these compounds and they're testing for it. And what they're finding is it does reverse these qualities of aging. My my oldest um, participant is seventy seven, and my youngest is forty four. And uh, my seventy seven year old participant. Uh, he has decelerated on his epigenome to 47. Uh, he has de decelerated on his, um, actually his, his glycan age to 47 and his, his uh, epigenome to 63. And his telomeres are 9,300 base pairs, which is like a 10-year-old. So that's our oldest one. Our youngest participant so far, and we have others that are starting, but we don't have data yet. Is 44. He decelerated on his uh, epigenome to 37 and on his glycan age to 26. And he also has the telomeres of a 10 year old, about, about 9,300 base pairs. So we're seeing across the board old and young. Now, my philosophy is the earlier you start with this, the sooner you can preserve your uh, the age where you are right now. You know, why wait till you're in your mid 60s and you got to claw it back? You know, uh, I mean, yes, it, it becomes more uh, poignant to want to reverse age when you're older and you're realizing, oh my God, uh, uh, if I don't do something here, I'm going to, I'm, I'm a dead man walking. You know, I mean, it's, you're going to get to a point in your 70s and 80s where you're done. But that doesn't have to happen. It doesn't. And there, there really is no limit to what is possible. Another great one that we have is something called Elastay GCM. Uh, it's based upon uh, the work of a Russian researcher, uh, Alexander Fetensov, who published on uh, Lifespan IO. And he was a, a great advocate of the use of uh, PGG, pentaglial glucose. It's something that's found in a Chinese medicinal herb called white peony root. And it's known to basically uh, increase the production of elastin. Okay, so what this means is we're, uh, we're not a bag of cells. We're actually scaffolded out. And the scaffolding material that all the cells are organized around is based upon two primary compounds. One is collagen, which you've heard a lot about, but the other is elastin. And elastin actually is the more important of the two, and I'll tell you why. Because as we grow older, our elastin is a very long-lived molecule, and we don't re re replace it. 
So we lose elastin while we while the collagen stays strong. The problem with collagen is it adjuncts, it crosslinks. And in that crosslink, we stiffen. Why does no one live past 120? When you see people in their 90s and the uh, centenarians in the 100s, 115, you don't see many people beyond that. They're not looking good. They're stiffening to death. If you stiffen in your cardiovascular, I mean, it's bad enough that your skin and your bones and you're creaking and whatever, but when your cardiovascular system starts to stiffen, you can produce a additional blood to flow to the organs to feed the organs when you do work so you start slowing down that slowing down eventually leads you to stiffen because of the cross-linking of collagen by adding elastin in there you reverse that process and so elastic gcm is the you know an ecm stands for elect uh, extracellular matrix is an important part of our protocol now, no one else is doing that right now i mean but there are companies working with elastin there's a company called elastrin that has used PGG, polyglial glucose, to uh, heal um, descending uh, aortic uh, abdominal aneurysms. So there's some real scientific work being done there. What we did is he said, well, pentaglial glucose, where is that found? So you do the research and you find out it's in this white peony root. Well, we bring that in, we extract it, we formulate it, boom, we have the basis of that to increase the elastin content. Very, very important stuff. Then we have uh, other products that are um, in that suite. Uh, Syntophagy is one. It's, it's the one that clears out old dead cells, the zombie cells, the senescent cells. You've got to get rid of those. You've got to get them out. So we have one that has quercetin and fisetin and spermidine, and these are the ones that are known to clear out the old uh, dying cells. So you've got to get rid of the dying cells. Uh, then we have one called Epiverse, which is based upon the, the, the early formulations of the, of the TRIM study uh, to really begin to address the, uh, the na nature of the, uh, uh, of the genome and uh, the epigenome. So it's, it's an epigenome formula that is designed to um, basically help the epigenome heal and regenerate. Um, I don't know how many I've gone over here, but uh, let's see. So I don't know. You can, you can get a sense here of uh, of what we're what we're going at. Uh -huh, and... uh -huh. What I I find really interesting here mm -hmm. is that other than fisetin, quercetin, and spermidin, um, what what you're talking about is not uh, is not the typical. You know, creatine, omega, fish oil, um, what vitamin D. Uh, this is not the typical extremely well researched supplements, and these are not the typical, not even the typical, you know, longevity supplements. Those are not extremely well researched, but there are some mouse data behind them. Like it's not alpha ketoglutarate, NAD. So, almost like the only things I recognized here is curcumin and uh, and um, the physetin spermidin stuff. So, so, you know, and I think that's where the value of this conversation is really, mm. because, because, you know, I, I don't think you have art articulated it properly, but, but it seems that the telomeres your telomeres and, and the study that you did have reduced, uh, sorry, lengthened the telomeres of, mm -hmm. of not only yours, but other people as well. And yeah, it's yeah. like 100% telomere lengthening and an epigenetic age um, went down. Like, 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 you know, like that's, that's like, un, that, that, that's, those are crazy results. And that they're, there is something really important here and science is on the edges, like the advanced science at the edge of science, at the edge of our understandings. And I think that's where you're working. And that's why I found this very, very interesting and, and, and valuable. And maybe someone who is, who's listening to this can, uh, can, can get some 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 cool ideas from well you him. know we believe that we're on the cutting edge of this i mean we jumped into the 
longevity explosion right at the very beginning, but but from a very oblique perspective, because uh, there was a lot of money pouring into the biotechnology side of this problem, a lot of money. Uh, I mean, we're talking billions of dollars. And we went right for a methodology that could be available immediately. Like when, when you're dealing with biotechnology and the discovery of molecular structure that is not found in nature, the FDA steps in and there's testing and uh, uh, clinical testing that has to be done. It takes years, 10 years, 20 years. Uh, before anything is going to be ready and available. Well, a lot of us don't have 20 years to wait. So the work that we've done is to discover these, what I call synergistic and mimetic herbal analogs. These are herb co compounds that are mimicking what's happening in the research phase of biotechnology that are available now and generally regarded as safe. They don't have to go through the FDA or the FDA's process because they've already been in use for 5,000 years. We know they're safe. Coming from Chinese medicine, from Ayurvedic medicine, from Siddha medicine, from Hawaiian medicine, from Western herbology, we know these things are safe. So the FDA has no purview over what we're doing. So we can bring a product right from start into uh, commercial availability, which we have done, we were selling product within the first six months of, of, of the development of what we had. Well, as soon as we started getting back positive testing, we knew immediately, and I guess it took more like a year before we really realized we could go out with this. <clears throat> but as soon as we had the tests, we were ready to go. And we demonstrated across the board that people were benefiting similarly with what, like what you're saying. You know, like it's it's incredible. We've cracked the code on this for products that are available now. <clears throat> yeah, science may come up with the magic bullet, you know, cellular reprogramming. There's a lot of interesting things on the horizon, but it's gonna be 20 years before this stuff arrives. And even then we don't know what forces will be, you know, maybe they don't want us to live long, you know, maybe the, the, the pharmaceutical industry has other ideas. What we're doing is available right now. You can go to my website, you can buy this, you can start taking it, you can test, to get a baseline, and in six months, you'll know exactly what's happening and how you're decelerating your age. It's available immediately. This is significant. And like I said, not a, we don't all have that the luxury of another 20 years waiting for something to happen. Um, so, so that's why I think, you know, we jumped into this. We were, we we're a pioneer in this idea of biomolecular herbology. We're a pioneer in finding the molecular structures already in the plant kingdom, extracting them and formulating them in a manner that is efficacious and testable. You know, we, we know what we have. We know what these things do. Now we're seeing the results because we can test for them. Take the glycan age test. Find out how your glycans are aging because that's a really good one for inflammation in the immune system. Take the Elysium Health Index test. Find out how your epigenome is doing. It's a really good standard of test because they use a dedicated chip to, to do the blood analysis. So it makes it very, very much more of a standard. Um, take the telomere tests, you know, find out how, you, how long your telomeres are. It's, this, this, the knowledge of this is incontrovertible. You can't say if you take a telomere test and you come back at, you know, it's 6,000 base pairs, the, the mean uh, differentiation from what that 6,000 base pairs means, if you're 30 and you have 6,000 base pairs, you're not aging well. <laughs> Pardon me. Similarly with, uh, with the epigenome test, you know, if your epigenome uh, is not, um, is above age, you're not aging well. If it's below age, you're aging, you're aging better than well. And so statistically, you'll find that you know, when I show up in my tests, and by the way, all my tests are published on the results page. You can go to the results page of my website right now. You can see the tests that I took over time because I, I have it all sitting there. For me and a few, for, for you other people, I've got doctors that are involved in, in this that are testing and, and everyone's coming away. Saying, wow. Not only are they testing well, they feel better. They feel the energetic 
a shift of changing their physiology in ways that have never been imagined before. And, you know, a lot of this, what's happening in this space, in the, in the longevity biotechnology space, is very geared towards specificity of one problem or another. And we're saying, no. We're saying, look, this is a complex, cascading, interrelated problem that's going to take a lot of different aspects of intervention to achieve the end results. So we've, like I say, we found 10 that we think are the most important ones. So there's going to be others, but these 10, if you do these 10, you'll get the results. You know, we discussed most of them here. Um, we have another product called Stemgenis, which uses a compound found in uh, uh, Garcinia indiga, South Indian uh, rind of a fruit that regenerates stem cells. Um, and, you know, we have... Uh, uh, basically identify where all the primary problems are in the aging thing. And you know what? It's different than viruses and colds and flus. It's different than other ailments that, that medicine is, is good at looking at. They haven't really identified or taken the time to understand aging as a holistic problem we have. We're saying, look, this is across the board. This is happening on a number of different levels. We're going to treat this. 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 Ten deep. And then we do that. And then we test. And we find out, oh, my God, I am I have the, the longer telomeres than a newborn. What does that? Now, there are some people that do that naturally. So we know it exists. But from uh, a the perspective of standard aging, if you're regrowing your telomeres, and that means you're initiating something called telomerase. You're on the right path. But that's one-tenth of what we think the problem is. Cellular uh, signaling. Uh, another one we have is called CME Enhance. That's another one that uses uh, resveratrol and control of the sirtuins to uh, assist and increase the, uh, uh, the uh, mitochondrial uh, production and, and energy efficiency. So one of the things they do is they go to this uh, MNN, which may or may not have some downstream problems, but it's a precursor and it's being sold prolifically right now and throughout the internet. Um, what we have found is a compound in an extract of parsley called apigenin. And apigenin does something, it, it, it basically suppresses a molecule called CD38 which is the controlling molecule for NAD, which is uh, nicotine, adenine, the diethylamine. And, and that one is the precursor to ATP, which is where energy comes from within the mitochondria. So we found that if you introduce apigenin, you suppress CD38, it increases NAD without having to go to a precursor that is a supplement that most of which might wind up just getting digested right out of you. It's a better way to increase NAD. And so we include apigenin in that CME enhanced product, and that's how we do that. We use other compounds that are uh, um, uh, similar to resveratrol that come from the plants, uh, uh, not um, Polygonum cuspidatum. Pardon me? Berberine. I, I thought you were going to say. Yeah. No, no, I was going to say there's a, there's a plant called Polygonum cuspidatum, and it's where the raw materials for resveratrol come from. Resveratrol uh, okay. comes right. from, the, from the, the skin of the grape, but it's actually better Oh, sorry, I was mixing metformin yeah. and resveratrol. Sorry. You know, no, this, this is another one. But if you look at each of these products, you will find that, that we're addressing very, very specific molecular structure with compounds that are not hyper-refined out of, you know, to get to monomolecular levels. We want just what the plant has to offer. The plant and the combination of these plants is, is offering a plethora of molecular structure that are synergistic and supportive. You take the primary molecule out of that, and you might have lost something that is important that the plant is producing. Let's trust nature a little bit here, that the plants that we're using that have been in use for 5,000 years are actually known to work because they have the right combination of, of elements in there. So that's our approach. You know, it's, it's a more naturopathic approach, but we're getting results. And I think ultimately that's what we want. We want results. 
and we want to be able to test and have the test do something. If you tested in a product and it did nothing, would you keep doing it? No. But if you test a product and you keep doing it and you're finding it's doing exactly what we say it's doing in reversing your age and the results are more energy, more vitality, I don't get sick anymore. I don't have those issues anymore. Uh, my, uh, all my, my parts function quite well. And I sleep well, I, I digest well, all these things. Um, I'm living my best life here, you know. Do you have vices? Do I have, what was the word? Vice, vices. Like vices. Smoking, hookers no. and coke, I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't, but, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. those things fall away as we get older, I would hope, you know. Um, I, I believe in living a clean life here on Maui. I drink very clean water. I actually recent got, recently got a device that uh, harvests water from the air. Maybe you know about those devices? I don't. Yeah, I don't. So it's a device called an aquafant. And it, it uh -huh. takes, uh, it's like a, um, a dehumidifier attached to a filtration system. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it, it pulls water out of the air. And then, I, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. I skin that water. I add a little mineral salt to it. And I pump some pure oxygen into it. And, and then that's the water that I drink. So drink clean water. Breathe clean air. You know, these are fundamental to eat good food. You know, I, I've been a, a... What's your environment is like? It's beautiful. I live in Hawaii. Have you been here? Have you been to Hawaii? Never. I know. Oh, it's seen pictures of it? It's, it's like that. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a, it's a it's famous cool. place. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wake up every day and I say, this is beautiful. Thank God. You know, mm -hmm. um, no, I live in, in a great environment, you know, um, family i have five grandchildren and you know two children and so you know look i i've lived a wonderful life i want to continue to live a wonderful life i want to see my grandchildren grow up i want to do more research i want to help more people i want to heal as many as i can um and introduce them to the fact that look you can live a clean life you can live a better life it's possible we can reverse aging it's we're doing it and we're not waiting around for science to figure something out 20 years from now. 20 years from now, a lot of my friends and, and, and close associates are all, they are already past. Mm -hmm. And so 20 years from now, they'll all be, unless they do something about it. Um, and that's what I'm offering here. I'm offering a safe and effective intervention with no side effects comes from the plant kingdom uh everyone that's involved in this is is experiencing a similar result we're extending our longevity and we know we're doing it because we're testing and the the efficacy of the materials are traceable traceability ability to organic high quality material is something that is super important to us we really believe that, you know, use the best quality products all the time. We use high quality. When we extract, we extract in glass only laboratory equipment, large scale glass, uh, because it produces the purest material. And then we formulate that after we've done our extractions according to ancient techniques that we've developed uh, and um, discovered and, and subsequently developed. And then we decant them into bottles and package it up and ship them out all over the world. There's no place we can't reach. There's nowhere that where, where people cannot take advantage of the research that we've done. And I want to emphasize that we've done an enormous amount of research here. You can go to my website, go to the product page, there's white papers on each of these where I reveal the studies that I've looked at to find the molecular structure that are doing what we believe they're doing. So, then there's clinical studies. We completed a clinical study uh, and we test regularly. I test regularly every six months. I try to do all three, three to four tests um, to find out, you know, how am I doing? You know, is anything changed? Have I gotten better or worse or same? You know, I'm OK with same. You know, people look at me and they say, wow, you kind of look like you're in your mid 50s. I'll take it. I'll take it. What's your diet is like? 
I've been a uh, an ovo lacto vegetarian. Ovo means egg, and lacto is is dairy. Uh, so dairy, um, eggs, and vegetarian. I don't eat any meat mm-hmm. uh, since 1974. That's when I started this discipline. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It works for me. I, I I know other people love meat, and I'm okay with that. I don't presume to tell anyone what they should or shouldn't eat. I know what works for me. Uh, we have found that the extended longevity protocol works no matter what your diet is. The same results happen whether you're eating meat or eating junk food or eating whatever. It doesn't matter. The molecules we're introducing through these extracts are doing their job. Yes, it'll be better for you to eat healthfully. <laughs> I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to. How is your diet? Oh, my diet. It's uh, usually good, but... More often than not, I make big mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you learn, you know. How old are you now? I'm 30. 32. 30. Yeah. Okay, so you haven't even gotten to the place where you need to worry about, you know, you're in your immortal phase, we like to say, when you're, you're, you're young and, and aging is not a problem. Give it another 10 years and all of a sudden you'll start seeing some changes happening. Tell me about that. <laughs> uh, well, I started seeing significant changes that, that kind of made me enter into this whole program in my mid-60s. I was pretty healthy before that. Um, but in my mid-60s, I looked in the mirror and, you know, I used to have black hair like you have, you know, long, whatever. And that was gone. And I, I said, well, okay, you know, my dad died at 77. My mom died at 87, you know. And, he died of heart disease. She died of cancer. But here I am in my mid to late 60s, you know, 66, that age here. Um, if I do nothing, then the conditions of aging will time me out. I will time out. Now, whether that's 10 more years or 20 more years or 30 more years, whatever it's going to be, I'll get old like everyone else before me and everyone else that we've seen. And then end of body. Spirit, another story. End of body. Uh, And that made me feel like, wow, you know, I can do something about this. I have the depth of understanding scientifically to address this. Let me jump in there. And it happened to be a time that the entire longevity world was about to open up. And I, I sort of hit it right at the beginning. I mean, I just timed it perfectly to be there with a, with an intervention, to be there with an idea that was different than anyone else's idea. The fact that we were able to test and find efficaciousness and success <clears throat> was a miracle to me. It was like, wow, because, you know, it didn't take 20 years to me to figure this out. I figured it out within a year. I had it all done to the point where I was taking it and testing it and finding out that, yeah, I got it. Um, have there been improvements along the way? Sure. You know, we, we tweak things if we get better understanding or deeper understanding or new information comes out. We're not we're not stuck where we are, but we certainly, um, you know, if, if I hit a home run, if that's the analogy, I hit a home run. You know, first first up at bat, I was like, boom, out of the park, you know. And, uh, and that's great. I'm happy about that because I'm the first uh, user of this. I'm, I call myself the first longevinaut, you know, really the first guinea pig, right? I tested on myself. I didn't know what I was going to get from this. I had a pretty clear understanding of what I was doing, but ultimately the proof of the pudding is in the, is in the taking of it. And I took it and I said, okay, let's, I'm going, I'm going for it. And I was blown away when my first epigenome test came back after a year and demonstrated that I have decelerated 15 years, and I've kept it there ever since. So to me, to chronologically continue to grow, but to um, epigenomically stay the same, says I've stopped aging. And at 54, and you can go on my side and see this test, at 54, okay, I'll take it. Because I feel it. I feel the strain. And I don't feel like I'm losing anything. I don't feel like I'm losing strength. I don't feel like I'm losing capacity. I don't feel like I'm losing my uh, my intellectual edge. It's only growing. 
So uh, I'm a great advocate of the work because I'm in it and I'm successful at it. I want no, to share it with, beautiful. You know, share with the world. Yeah, I would like you to share with the world. Yeah. Now there is one more category we didn't discuss, which is, uh, which is how do you move? Do you exercise? Hmm. I do. I do. I, I don't uh, exercise uh, as prolifically as maybe I, I could or should. I don't know what the benefit is there, but uh, I do some um, some weightlifting daily, mm -hmm. just 10 pound curls, this sort of thing to keep my muscles toned. I walk uh, whenever I can on the beaches here, which are quite lovely, I might add. Um, you know, a couple of miles. I also have recently, I have a, a small trampoline that I use and I have a, one of these uh, vibrating plates. Have you seen these things? Vibrate you plug like in electromuscle they, simulation. Yeah, or they what? just kind of, you stand on it and they shake and... Oh, yes, 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 oh, yeah. yes. Uh, those, those, mm -hmm. seem, those seem good. Those seem good. Um, so I try to keep active in, in that regard. Uh, I'm very busy with the business and, and uh, uh, family life and these sort of things. So you know, I'm 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 not a uh, I'm mm -hmm. not a frequent uh, visitor to the gym or anything like that. Um, but I, I I get enough movement to make me feel healthy and like I'm I'm on top of it. Um, I try to keep away from sugar and bread and those things that are gonna make me fat. But you know. But my diet is very simple. I, I don't I don't go for very extravagant stuff, and I, I I try to keep active by exercising regularly, but not um, um, maniacally. You know, I'm I'm not like a a body fitness you know muscle muscle guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Anything extra that you're doing that people don't don't usually do? Who? That's a good question. You know, I, I think that you got to live a balanced life. You know, I, I think part of the issue is stress. And wh while I don't do anything specifically to ameliorate stress, um, I try to deal with stress emotionally um, in that I'm one to be in a state of profound gratitude for each day of my life. You know, you reach a time in your life when you get a little bit older where each day is precious. And so I'm in deep gratitude every day for the blessings that, that have come my way. When I have a hot tub, I get in my hot tub every morning. <laughs> tell, tell me more about what it's like to be in your, your mind. Mm. Well, I, I have a lot of interests beyond um, what I do in science. Uh, I'm an artist, a fine artist. I've painted many hundreds of paintings. I've written several books that can be found on Amazon. I've, uh, I've been a musician all my life and a composer. So I've done a lot of work in music and I, I try to keep up with those things, not as much as I used to when I was younger, but from time to time I, I do involve myself in that. I think it's important to be creative uh, as much as I can. So I live a very creative life. Uh, and I think that um, my creativity is only enhanced by what I'm doing in my longevity work right now. Like I was saying earlier, I'm intellectually on fire. I, I've developed an enormous body of information and, uh, and insight. There's a few more uh, products on the website as well that have to do with nootropics in the brain. Uh, there's something called Cognolase, which addresses the integrated stress response. I have a product called Emofix, which has to do with regrowing dendrites on the amygdala, which is the emotional body, with the concept that if you had trauma that you wanted to process, you could deal with that trauma by growing new synapses in your amygdala that would allow you to grow out of the old trauma. So there's Emofix. There's another product I just developed called Dream, and it relates specifically uh, to reorienting the neurochemistry towards oxytocin. 
and it uses certain molecules that will open up the brain, blood brain barrier to let the oxytocin synergists go in there, especially good for women. Women really respond extraordinarily to this particular compound uh, formula. Uh, another one called osteoridin, which is related to just general joint pain. Um, so I'm, I'm also developing other formulations on, on a regular basis. I have an interest in uh, uh, not only neurochemistry, but I have an interest in um, some of the cellular regeneration technologies that are being developed and developing synergistic and herbal analogs for those. Um, that's a big issue right now is how to sell cellular reprogramming. Have you heard of that? Um, yes, yes. So I'm, yes. I'm active in development of those things. Um, I have a sister company to what I do in extended longevity called Intelligent Remedies that has a number of about 18 products on it, including the whole suite of products to address COVID and the vax injury problems that can deal with uh, basically turning off the S-spike protein and regenerating the endothelium. I have products for uh, myocarditis and pericarditis that work pretty darn well, and also something called athrombosin, which removes some of these uh, blood clot issues that are happening. Um, Atoxylate, which gets rid of the heavy metal. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm across the board. I'm involved in a lot of different research projects. Keeps me really, really busy. Um, but I try to get in nature too. You know, I, I, I live in an extraordinary place. There's waterfalls. There's beaches. There's mountains here. I, I live on the flanks of a 10,000 foot volcano. It's dormant, but uh, I'm at about 1,300 feet in the the banana. We call it the banana belt because everything grows here. Uh, I've created a food forest where I have 20 different kinds of uh, food-related plants growing here. Coconuts, bananas, oranges, lemons, limes, um, guavas. Uh, I've, I've got a Suriname cherry tree that's going off right now. It is it's just amazing. And a huckleberry bush. and So, so I live in a food forest. So I, I like to get my energy uh, from when it can, when it's possible, it's not always possible, from uh, from a growing plant when it's still growing. So it goes from the tree into my mouth, and that's the best energy right there, you know, when you can get it right from the ground. So I, I garden, I, I, have, I, gar I do gardening and things like that. Um, I have a, an orchidarium. I've, I've developed a, an interest in growing orchids, so I've made a certain segment of my house just filled with orchids that I take care of and whatever. But uh, yeah, between writing and music and uh, it's a full life, you know, and relationships. And relationships are really important. Um, and whatever and you do your, in your life. Go ahead. What's, what's your tribe is like? Well, they're all, there are friends and associates that have seen the light of what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, look, I've got uh, two wonderful kids who each had uh, have a total of five grand grandsons, all boys. Mm -hmm. That's one segment of, of activity that's going on. Uh, all the people that are involved in the extended longevity, I see, I see them periodically because they come in, they get, you know, once a month, I'll see some of them and that sort of thing. Um, strangely enough, you know, many of my fr dear friends have passed on, you know, you get to a place where, you know, my, my family of origin are gone. My mom, my dad, my brother, they're all, they passed on. Um, and that makes it all the more poignant to really appreciate every day and to appreciate the, uh, the blessings that life has to give. You know, I'm, um, I sleep really well. I wake up in the morning feeling totally great and blessed to have another shot at another day. Yeah. You know, we live to the fullest of, of what we can live. I have, I have a deep and abiding spirituality. Um, and it's articulated in some of my writings. I wrote a book called A Path to Illuminated Awakening. I wrote another book that's a translation of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Uh, and then I wrote another book um, called Keeper of Secrets that articulate the uh, the interesting phenomena of the relationship between ancient Egypt and Hawaii. 
So I, I have that happening um, in addition to my other pursuits. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much right now as focused as I can be in longevity. That has, that has captivated me almost fully uh, because it's so important. And, and, you know, you cannot live longer without being healthy. That's the other thing I want to say to everybody out there that might hear this. If you want to live longer, you have to be healthy. And so if these, if this extended longevity protocol helps to make you healthy, you will live longer. They go together. They're not separate. You don't, you don't want to live long and be old and, and decrepit and sick. You want to live long because you're healthy and active and involved in life. That's key. A lot, a lot of it has to do with your, your attitude and wh where is your heart? What do you love? You know, do what you love. And never ignore your relations. All your relations are important. You know, there's 8 billion people on the planet. How many people do we really know? A handful, right? You know, 20, 30 maybe and close and maybe less than that, you know. Yeah, there's some extended things we know, but... It, the miracle of life is how few people we actually come to know profoundly in our life. And those relations, they, they mean everything, As we, especially as we get older. You'll find that I was listening to a, a, a podcast today, and was, uh, people were being interviewed who were in their 70s and 80s, and they were asked, you know, what, what's the one thing that, that you would find in life that was most important to you? And they would say relationships. And it wasn't money. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, you don't need a lot of money. You need some of it, but you don't need a lot of it. I mean, yeah, it's great for those who get a lot of it, but um, it was all about relationships. And ultimately, it's all about love. If we can cultivate love by living longer, what a blessing that would be. you know. And to teach those who are younger about the goodness of, of our path, of our existence, I think that's as sweet as it can get. That's my message. You're big on love, mm. aren't you? Um, you know, I'd like to talk a bit about death as well. So people have two fear, fears uh, regarding death. Uh, one is the events leading up to your death. Um, that is not going to be a very nice experiment experience the other is is the absence of of your existence right so that's that's the two how to deal with death you can look at the people who who who, who went in into their death without fear like they have a, had a certain level of value sufficiency um and and they accepted their death. So these people were always loving something, loving their they they accept their death because their death means uh, the survival of their children. Um, I happily die if my child child lives because of that. Um, so that's love, or or nation state um i'm a, i am a libertarian I, I i i like to throw stones at the dying nation states but many people die for their nation state lovingly because they believe they love it so much they believe that it's worth it so so it does seem like in one sense the answer to death is a certain level of value sufficiency which is which is love um do you have anything to add to that well until recently death was rather inevitable and now it may not be so inevitable historically we have only seen birth life and death that has been the, our parents our grandparents their grandparents what we get are moments in time. That's all we get. Moments in time. We don't know how long that's going to last. If one 
should embrace a deeper spiritual philosophy of the supremacy of consciousness beyond the physical body, then there's nothing to fear. Death will come when it needs to come. It's uh, a higher order, higher implicit order of experience. Look, you know, I mean, people die crossing the street, you know, hit by a car, people die in, in war, people die all kinds of ways. Old age is not the only pathway or, uh, of exit. Sometimes it's accidental, sometimes it's disease, we don't know. To try and create meaning from this without the experiential knowledge of a higher consciousness is nihilistic. It, it means it becomes meaningless. So where is meaning in the life, birth, life, and death process? Unless you're clear about the nature of the immortality of the soul, of the spirit, and its inherent nature to periodically incarnate into the physical existence. Without a greater understanding of spirituality, we're cast adrift. Because there will be a time when this life, this physical life, will end. And even with the prospect of extending that through the extended longevity protocol or whatever means you might, you might achieve, nevertheless, there's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's the end. Will the end be gentle? Will we pass surrounded by our loved ones in our sleep? I mean, that's the, I guess, the best outcome. Or will it be some sort of disjuncted, violent problem that happens to us? We cannot know what the future will bring in terms of our own mortality. We can only live the best possible life by being in the present as much as we can. To fear death is to create anxiety for no good reason. Loving life for all its goodness in the present, in this moment in time. And don't forget there's only this moment in time. It, ex it moves forward, never backward. Everything that has happened in the past is, exists only as a memory. It's not here. Everything that happens in the future is an anticipation. It's not here. So we only have this moment in time, and we only have moments in time. So be as present as you can in this moment in time with the realization that this being that we exist within, in which we live, move, and have our consciousness, is sacred and is eternal. And if you accept the eternality of your consciousness, then what is there to fear, no matter how you leave? When you leave, you'll be happy if you're happy now. If you live in happiness, if you live with love in your heart, when you leave this body, you will leave with that love. So keep the love alive, because we, know, we don't know the hour nor the day that we'll be destined to finish our work here, because there is a temporal and almost a fragile nature to, the, to our human experience. Time passes quickly. Before you know it, we're in and we're out. There was a wonderful movie I saw one time where... There was a man in his, the, he was aged and he was dying. And he sort of woke up from a dream and he was sitting with his son and he said to him, realizing that he was at the end of his life, he said, God, it just seemed like minutes. The days are long, but the years are short. We can mark our time on this planet, often through our children, watching them grow up. And you will look at your parents and your grandparents and their parents as far back as you can go, and you'll find that the further back you go, the less you knew of them. It fades. It fades in and out. My philosophy is to not fear death, but to be fully involved. And when the time comes, I'll be ready. The poets were right. The secret of longevity is 
love. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think so. Um, all right. Is there any athlete on the longevity leaderboard that you, you know? No, not really. Personally, no. Um, I, I don't look at it much. I don't really pay attention much to that particular um, effort. I think it's um, it's a promotion. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, as much as one would want to compete in a promotion like that, okay, it serves a certain purpose. Um, in the process of moving forward in my work, I look at it less and less. I think that um, there's so many people who would want the benefit of health and a long life. These people who are on the leaderboard, so to speak, yeah, they're, they're making an effort. That's great. I appreciate their effort. Um, my feeling is, you know, who, who is our customers, who are our uh, patients? How about everyone who doesn't want to grow old and die? Um, on the leaderboard, you know, the, there's the vanguard, you know, those are the people that are saying, yeah, I can do something here. But, but the competitive nature in it, frankly, for me, is counterproductive. We should each be doing what we can at any moment in time to improve our health and well-being so that we can live long and healthy lives. It's more important for people as they get older. Less important when we're young because we can really preserve our youth. You know, there's Brian Johnson. You've seen his work. And, and uh, he's the very wealthy man who's, I think he's 45, and he's trying to be 18 or something like that. You know, and he's doing millions of dollars worth of, in, of interventions and he's, he's making some progress. He wears a t-shirt that says, don't die. And, um, uh, and I appreciate his, his perspective on it. You know, there should be many perspectives on this. There should be many, um, attempts at finding ways to do this because it affects everyone eventually but more for those who are already advanced in age because they're going next. If there's a wave, you know, the guys your age are haven't caught the wave yet. Guys my age are well on that wave. So my feeling is, you know, for all of us in our 70s now, you know, which is that baby boomer generation that I'm a part of, get on the program. Start living a better life. Stay young, stay healthy, make greater contributions, help the next generation. It becomes a, a, a transgenerational operation here to see that, because look, if we're all old and sick and dying, then we're a burden to society. If we're healthy and productive and, and conscious and, and, and living our life to the, to the best of our ability, then we're enriching society. So let's be part of that group and help each other. Ultimately, I think that um, when I die, it won't matter. To my loved ones, it will matter. To me, not so, not so much. I think we die and then we find out that it's, it's all a dream as we awaken to the greater self. What is one thing that you believe very strongly, but most people disagree with you on that? Well, you know, I had some people at the National Institute of Aging uh, say to me that it hadn't been done before, therefore it can't be done. And I strongly disagree with that. Uh, I think those of us who were striving to make this happen to find a path towards extending longevity and i don't know if it's immortality i think immortality is of the souls of the consciousness but extending longevity definitely possible are there limits to what we can do in terms of extending our longevity i don't think so i don't think there's any limits you know we've only seen people live in the western world to about 120. There are some stories of yogis in the East who lived much longer. We don't even know how much longer. And scripturally, you know, there's the Methuselahs of life, you know, 
hundreds of years, perhaps. I don't know what's possible there. But I do know that there is a way and we're going to find it. And when we, as we believe we have done, now it's a question of just going for it, of continuing the protocol to find out how long can we keep ourselves healthy, vibrant, and productive. Um, I think it's possible to go for hundreds of years. Certainly, we want to break through that 120 because no one seems to live past 120. So that's the first real important barrier. Well, okay, so if I'm 70 and my goal is to break through 120, that's 50 years out. There's a lot can go down in 50 years, a lot of life to live in 50 years. We'll see. You know, we'll see how it, how it looks when I, <laughs> as we get that close. Maybe I fail, you know, but I, I try. I'll try. I am a capitalist. And I believe we are value-seeking creatures. And I believe the largest value that we can provide to other people is the one that they are willing to pay for. So my question to you is, how can people give you money? What is the largest value that you can provide them? Okay. So the extended longevity protocol is a set of 10 phytotherapeutic extract formulations that address the 10 determined factors of aging. It comes in a set. It's a month supply. Online, if you do the monthly by subscription, it's $400 a month. If you buy a year in advance, it's $4,000. You save $800. That is the sales proposition. We're also in a capital formation phase, so we're raising capital. And uh, we have a special happening right now for a $100,000 investment in shares in the company at $5 a share. We'll give you a lifetime supply of the extended longevity protocol delivered monthly to you for as long as you live. We expect to be around for a long time, and we want everyone to join us. And uh, capital formation is important because we've got a lot of uh, work to do to get the word out to people. We have substantial production facilities that we're currently in the process of expanding here on Maui. We have materials to buy. We have a team to support. Uh, we intend on growing uh, a multi-billion dollar company out of this. You said you're a capitalist. I respect that. Me too. We want to turn this into a unicorn here, as they say in the capitalist world, uh, where we're making billions of dollars. Our goal is a million customers. A million customers spending $400 a month. That's $400 million a month. That's $5 billion in sales. We're going to take that public Right now in the extend in the longevity field, they're giving 100 to 150 price to earnings ratio times. So 150 times. So if we can bring us up to five billion in sales, we'll be a five hundred billion dollar company, and that's what I'm going for. And as an entrepreneur, I've been I've been entrepreneur for 50 years. I've taken three companies public. I kind of know what I'm doing here. Uh, but this is the big one for me. And even though um, most guys my age are going out to pasture, not me. I'm young enough in heart and in physiology and in epigenome and in telomeres to to go for the big one. So I'm with you on the capitalism part. Let's make some money. Let's sell this thing. Let's have people buy the product and get on the product and live longer, healthier, more vibrant lives. And if you want to take the ride with us, you know, we have opportunity in, in sales of the, uh, of the shares of the company. So that's, that's what we do. That's beautiful. Dr. Steven Shore, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it.